Hey guys, welcome to Classic Rock and Country Music Facts and Trivia. Appreciate you being here. Uh, before we get started, I ask you to please subscribe. Thank you. Today's video is on Grace Slick of Jefferson Starship. And quote, I wanted to be out of line that when I fired myself the next day, nobody would object. It was a nice that great night that Grace Slick left Jefferson uh, Starship. Take a look. In early 1978, Grace Slick was no fun to be around. Appearing at a club version of the Gong Show in San Francisco, she abused the contestants, fought with her fellow judges, and was eventually dragged off stage after breaking some microphones. The audience, who had been baited by the Jefferson Starship singer, jeered as she was hauled into the wings. Later the same day, she was stopped by the California Highway Patrol and charged with drunk driving. She abused arresting officers and spent the night in jail. With a person who is an alcoholic as I am, you don't ever have one or two drinks, she told the Rolling Stone in 78. Doesn't work that way. I never had two drinks in my life. It's either I drink and I'm totally drunk or I don't drink at all. Slick's problems with alcohol and her increasingly unreliability had strained her relationship with the band. Gracie has a problem, a real serious problem, said bassist Pete Sears, who joined Starship after playing on Slick's solo album Manhole. She's such a beautiful person when she's sober, a really sweet woman, but it's like instant change. It's more than just being an alcoholic. When she gets drunk, the evil forces seem to be able to take over. There's like a demon looking at you or something. She just stares. Things came to a head in June of 78 when Starship headed off to Europe to play a short series of shows in support of that year's uh, Earth album. After a performance in Amsterdam, the band crossed the border into Germany and drove to the open-air theater at Lorley, where they were due to headline the Sunset Festival, uh, supported by Leo Kaup, the Atlanta Rhythm Section, and Brand X. The band never took the stage. The slick got drunk, refused to, re refused to perform, and punches were thrown backstage as band guitarist Paul uh, Kantner who dated Slick between 69 and 75 and was the father of her child, traded blows with the man she'd left him to marry. Band lighting director Skip Johnson. Starship's performance was canceled and the audience rioted, stealing the band's equipment and burning the stage down. It all came to a head two nights later in Hamburg. The band hired new equipment, played a full set, but Slick was drunk and those evil forces finally got the better of her. I decided to wear an 18th century milkmaid's dress on stage, Slick told Cashbox two years later. When I came downstairs, someone remarked that, look, looks like a cute little Swiss miss, which really irked me. I went back upstairs, put on a Nazi uniform, got drunk, and did a back at you for the second World War routine for the show. Turns out that the goose stepping uh, in Hitler's salute and who won the effing war uh, belligerents were as frowned upon as in 78 as they are today. And for a second night in a row, Jefferson Starship faced a furious audience. After the show, Kantner demanded Slick's resignation and got it. Even as I pulled the stunt, it was clear to me that I had developed a major attitude problem, Slick wrote in her 2008 autobiography, Somebody to Love, a Rock and Roll Memoir. I didn't like pandering to Nazi offspring. I didn't like the constituted uh, airplane situation. I didn't like me for taking part in it. I wanted the Germans to see a mirror of repulsive self-loathing. I wanted the band to see an uncontrollable, un uncontrollable mutant. And I wanted to be so out of line that when I fired myself the next day, nobody would object. Less than a week later, Jefferson Starship played without her at a Midsummer Night Dream Festival in Nebworth in the UK, uh, joining a bill that included Lorelei uh, Survival's, Survivor's Atlanta Rhythm Section and Brand X, plus Genesis, Tom Petty, and the Heartbreakers of Devo. Eventually, Slick faced her demons, becoming the first high-profile rock star known to attend AA meetings. It wasn't easy, Slick told uh, Classic Rock. Being sober is weird. People Magazine broke my uh, anonymity about AA, but it wasn't a surprise. My behavior made that obvious. Everybody knew I was a big drunk, plus booze and cocaine is an ugly combination. I loved it. I lived on it, because the two things uh, even each other out. There was happy ending. Slick returned to Jefferson Starship three years later in 1985 after an ugly lawsuit and a departure of Kantner. The band morphed into Starship and released their biggest single, We Built This City on Rock and Roll, 
a song that reached number one on the U.S. charts. Slick hated the song, but the royalty checks sure were nice. And there you go. I just, uh, it's always sad to me to, how many, not just rock and roll musicians, but a lot of country musicians get into that rut and into the, the, the alcoholism and the drugs and all. Uh, but it's always a cool ending when they come out of it. Hope you guys enjoyed this. Please don't forget about classic rock. Please don't forget to subscribe here at Classic Rock and Country Music Facts and Trivia. Um, and please come back tomorrow for some more. Have a great day. God bless. I'll be praying for you. Thank you.